y'all. It is Friday, um, June 21st. I'm going too fast. <laughs> but I am uh, somewhere in Wisconsin on the way to Duluth, Minnesota for my 22nd half marathon already, what the hell, and my 18th state. Um, so I'm doing the Grandma's half marathon or the Gary Bjorklund half marathon. I think the J is silent. I'm sure I'll find out later today. And um, I think I have about three-ish hours until I'm there. Um, so when I went to book a, a hotel, none of the hotels in the area were available. And I didn't think until later, like, oh, I should call and see about availability. Um, nope, I didn't. So I'm camping. <laughs> Which is fine. I love camping, so it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, I think the Spirit Mountain Campground, so I think that'll be a cool experience in itself because it's right on the lake. Um, so I'm heading to the campground to check in, put up my tent, and then I'm gonna go to packet pickup and then um, meeting up with the team for um, the dinner. So I fundraised for this half marathon. I, um, I raised money for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention on behalf of my sister, um, who attempted suicide two years ago. Um, so that and just being someone who struggles with depression and anxiety every single day and has had thoughts go there before and I'm actually surprised that I made it to 25 almost 26 anyway um, I feel like mental health is just a huge deal and I feel like it's not taken seriously I feel like because you can't see it that it doesn't exist like in the eyes of society and I'm just like no but it does though and you need to take care of yourself so raising money and awareness for that and kind of dedicating this race to my sister, it's just, I am, I'm very excited and I hope that it goes so much better than my half marathon two weeks ago. Um, and I'm definitely going to stretch out my left hip beforehand because I was on pace for sub 240 probably and then it just blew up at mile nine and instead of stopping to stretch and then continuing to run I just walked and ran and then walked and then ran and that didn't help so with that behind me hopefully one it doesn't happen at all but if it does knowing to stop and stretch I'm gonna stretch before I'm stretching tonight I feel more mentally prepared for this one than I did for the Sheep Power Half Marathon. For one thing, I have wanted to do the Grandma's Marathon for a few years now. A lot of the people that I follow and talk to on Instagram in the running community have done this one and they recommend it. Um, so the Sheep Power was one that Mimi really wanted to do and so I still had to check off Indiana, so I just kind of tagged along and did it with her instead of if I had done maybe the monumental half marathon in November time, I probably would have been more excited for it and it probably would have been better. Now, the She Power half marathon, like the course was beautiful. I think that on a different day with different weather and a different mindset, I might have had a better day. But that being said, I feel like for being pissed off, wanting to quit at mile one, not wanting to be there, wanting to turn around on the drive there the whole entire way, that I had a good race for what it was. Um, but I just feel very different about 
grandma's marathon and I just feel like it's going to be one of those races that do have like a quality of magic. So like the flying pig to me is the most magical race experience of all time and I feel like grandmas might be able to um, not compete with it because nothing will ever beat the flying pig for me. That's my favorite. But um, get close to it I guess. It, it must have some sort of magic if it's drawing in 20,000 runners, which I also cannot wrap my head around. I am also pretty excited that it's a point-to-point -point race instead of like a loop or an out and back. Uh, because that reminds me of the wine glass half marathon in Corning, New York, which was, <coughs> excuse me, my second half marathon. And that race experience was pretty fun. I, uh, I know that this one isn't going to be downhill the whole way like Corning is, but that's okay, and I will survive. I, I'm hoping for a beautiful course. I'm hoping for just to freaking have fun, really, finish strong. I don't really have a time goal. I'd like to be faster than the she power I'd like to be faster than the flying pig this past year but at the same time I did run a half marathon two weeks ago um, I'm not 21 anymore I I don't know I don't know maybe the magic will just help me to run fast well I guess we'll see so I will Yes, ma'am. the ball on posting my video about grandmas oops um so it's now been I think two and a half three weeks since I did it um and that I don't know where that time went really I just finished my hill workout so I'm still a little out of breath it's been about two and a half, three weeks since I ran grandma's. Um, I drove up and then drove home the next day because I just wanted to be home. Um, but I stayed at a campground and I had like a huge anxiety attack. And I ended up tearing down my campsite, the tent, everything. Because I didn't realize like it was a walk to the campsite type situation. I've never seen that before. So I couldn't see my car. And then I was like, I'm not going to be able to tear this thing down and walk back and forth after running a half marathon. Like I know my legs. I know myself. It's not going to happen. So I ended up just sleeping in my car. And it was pretty comfortable because I'm only five, one and three quarters. So I just kind of filled the back seat with fuzzy blankets and two pillows and I slept really well um, got up at 4 
um, did all the pre-race rituals, and then I headed to where the shuttle bus was at the mall, which was about a 20 minute drive. So I actually ended up getting there early um, and got on one of the first buses to the start line. Walked to the start line just fine and um, lined up in the corral and it, it was really smooth, so I was confused. And then, um, I stayed with the 245 pacer for the first seven because I didn't want to go out too fast and crash and burn, which oof, is kind of crazy for me to think about because I used to be like a 207, 215 half marathoner, and now I'm just like 40 minutes slower for no reason. But I feel like it's related to um, gaining weight, unfortunately, but that means that I can lose weight. I've gained and hopefully get faster again um anyway so I stayed with the 245 person for the first seven lost them in a water station and then just kind of paced myself after that to keep going I ended up running like a 251 so I, I was happy with it that's the fastest that I've run a half marathon all all year so I felt like that was good um and then after that, I really, I really just wanted to go home. So I didn't get any post-race beer. I just kind of hit the porta potty first thing. And then you have to walk across like this stairs of doom. And I was just like, why? Why would you put this after a half marathon and half an hour it's enough? And then get a shuttle back to um, where you're, you parked your car. Um, I felt like the half marathon packet pickup experience was just a little much. Like it gave me a lot of anxiety to have to walk by the pasta buffet thing and then walk through all the vendors and then get to where you get your bib. Because they don't even give you your shirt until after you finish, which I also thought was a little weird. I was like, I, I would have run. For just the metal but now like I have to run for my shirt too like really um I do I like the shirt that we got um but I was just a little annoyed at that and um that I was supposed to meet up with the team for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention since I was a charity runner for this one but I ended up just it was just too much and I just went back to the campground and tried to calm down and I think I was asleep by 8.30 because I got a, I had to get up at 4. Um, the course itself was a lot hillier than I thought that it would be based on looking at the elevation chart. It looked like it was going to be pretty flat, but that was very much not the case, which it wasn't super obnoxiously hilly. It was just hillier than I thought that it would be. Um, so it was still fine though. I, I really liked it. I liked being along the lake the whole time. Hi. But I thought that it was, it was beautiful. And as you got closer to the finish line, it, um, the crowd support got a lot better. So I really appreciated it once there were more people cheering for you. And I, I think I even took a shot of beer around like mile nine or so. It was outside of frat house. I don't really remember anymore, but yeah. So grandma's, that was a bucket list half marathon and it was a great way to check off Minnesota. Um, I just got back from New Orleans for um, my anniversary trip with Tyler and it was kind of an opportunity to just relax. I didn't work out for four days. I ate when I was hungry and what I felt like eating instead of worrying about everything. And I felt like it was what I needed. So now moving forward, that's about two weeks of recovery. One was just like active recovery. And then last week I didn't really do much of anything. So now this week so far, I started doing weightlifting again with Tyler. And I have two... 
um, speed workouts. I did one today. It was hill repeats. And just kind of getting back into base building because my next half marathon is um, about a month away. Um, it'll be in Eureka, California to check off California. I've never been out on the West Coast before, so I think that it'll be a lot of fun. And then from there, it's looking like I'm just going to do a half marathon every month until December. And then I have no idea what um, next year is going to look like yet. Um, I, I, it's just too soon to tell with this whole traveling thing, but that's where we're at. So I will probably see you in a month, I guess. I'm not racing until then, so... Mm -hmm.